Welcome to Photoshop in 5. I'm photographer and digital artist Dustin Valkoma and in today's video I want to share with you my favorite cheat code for blending images fast in Photoshop non-destructively. And then we're going to talk about a couple ways that I like to create some nice separation in my image before moving forward with the composite. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, in Photoshop here, we'll see that we have three layers. We have a threshold layer up top that is going to be the visualization later on. We have our subject layer and a background layer. And we can see that our subject isn't really matching our background too well. So we can start with fixing that first. Now what we'll do is with our subject layer selected, we can head down and create a new curves adjustment layer. We'll hold down Alt or Option and click right in between these two layers to create a clipping mask for that curves layer that is only going to adjust our subject underneath. Now instead of having the layer mask selected, we'll select the thumbnail of the curves adjustment layer. And now inside of the curves properties panel, we'll hold down Alt or Option and click on Auto. So this is going to bring up our auto color correction options dialog. And instead of enhanced brightness and contrast, we're going to find the dark and light colors. So we can click on that. Now we'll start by selecting the shadow color. And what we're going to do is find somewhere on our background image that has a little bit of hue and isn't a complete black. So if you select the complete black, it's not really going to change the hue or match the color of that area. So what we'll do is just find one that has a little bit of hue to it like this. Click OK. Now for the highlights, I generally like to find somewhere that is the brightest area in our scene. In this case, it's going to be a flare here from the light. And we can select on a brighter value here. Now we can see that that's changed, but the hue values haven't changed too much in our subject. And that's because that's a bit more white or gray. So it's just dropping some of the exposure that we have there. Now what I'm going to do is actually find somewhere in these midtones that get a bit more bluish. And we'll see that now the color on our subject has changed quite a bit more. Inside of the color picker here, I'm just going to raise the value of that blue hue so that we can have that matching a bit better. And we can choose OK for our highlight color. And then we can also click on OK to exit the dialog for the color corrections. Now, we do not want to save these new target colors as defaults because we may need to perform this operation again and we don't want to have these colors chosen for us. So we'll go ahead and select No. And if we want to adjust the values of our subject or add a bit more contrast, we can use the RGB curves here right inside of the properties panel. So what we'll do is we'll head somewhere down to the deeper values and we'll create a slight S curve with some darkness there and then head up to the brighter midtones and create a little bit of nice contrast on our subject here. So far, so good. Our subject's colors are matching the background quite well. We can visualize that by turning off and on this curves layer. This is going to help us see that quite a bit more. Now, what we want to do is actually separate our subject from the background. So the way that we're going to do this is with the brush tool selected, we're going to press the Alter Option key and click on one of our mid-tone values to get a nice hue of color here. And then what we're going to do is turn on our threshold layer. We'll see that we have a Z-depth pass that's right inside of our channels panel. Julius has an awesome video in this series. We'll leave it linked in the description below that you can check out on how to create the Z-depth layer and how to use that in your composites to build atmosphere. So I'd advise you to check that one out if you're confused on how this one might have been done with the neural filters. So what we'll do here is press control or command and click on our Z-depth alpha channel here. And then we'll select our background layer. Now down in our adjustments layer, we'll create a new solid color adjustment layer. We'll see that the color picker shows the last color that was selected and we'll click OK there. What we're going to want to do at this point is take a look at our threshold adjustment layer. So we'll click on it and we can adjust these properties. Now if we head all the way to the right side, we'll see that we can visualize the brightest parts of our image. And if we head down to the opposing side, we'll see that we can view all of the shadows. So what we're going to do is find a threshold somewhere right around 40, 40 to 45. And we'll see that currently our subject is the darkest point in our environment. And that's because we've created this color fill layer. 
And so what we're going to be able to do here is now select our color fill layer and drop the fill on this layer until we can start to see some values in that background. And so the higher that we raise this, we'll see where our subject is going to pop the most while getting some darker values here in the back. I think we can set somewhere right around 42 to start. Now, this is doing a good job of the visualization for us, but now that it's done, we can turn off our threshold layer and we can see the adjustments that we've now made to the background, adding a bit more of maybe atmospheric perspective back there and adjustment. So what we can do at this point is start to work with this visually, should we choose, and really find a point that's going to work for us in the rest of the scene. Now, in this video, we've talked about using Photoshop's hidden curves features to match a subject's color to a background very quickly. And then we expanded on how to use the threshold adjustment layer to better visualize the brightest and darkest points of your scene so that you can create some nice separation from your foreground to your background quite quickly. Now, if you like this Photoshop in 5 series, consider subscribing, leave a comment down below on what you would like to see next. And until I see you in a future video, stay creative. I'll see you then.